Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome to another Top 10 LEGO video. And in this case, we'll be taking a look at the Top 10 Most Expensive and Rarest Standard Retail Bionicle Sets. Now these are going off of the Bricklink average price at this point in time. Again, this could fluctuate or change in the future, but at the time I'm recording this video, the list is 100% accurate, taking a look at the top 10 most expensive and rarest LEGO Bionicle sets. And so without further ado, let's just jump right into things because there is a lot to check out here and a few surprises as well. Alright, so kicking things off with number 10 here, we have a set that was actually a combiner model between different sets, but was released as its own set. It is set number 10203 Voparac, which retails for around $161 used on Bricklink, and if you want a new and sealed copy, be prepared to pay closer to $239 US dollars. On average, Voparac was launched in August of 2005 and only was sold for about four months, being discontinued by the end of the year in December 2005, and its very short lifespan definitely contributes to the rarity of this model. It also retailed for 50 US dollars, which is under half of what it's actually selling for today, even after you factor in inflation. Just looking at the build, you can probably assume which models it is a combiner of. It combines the Kitongu, Sidorak, and Rudaka models from the Bionicle 2005 Titans lineup, so it includes all three Titans, and that actually makes for a pretty interesting set in terms of the color scheme, which honestly I think kind of worked out fairly well. Despite it having very different color schemes for its source material, it tried to limit itself on the Keat Orange or the Flame Yellowish Orange slightly, and focused mostly on the Dark Red and the Black colors from the Rudaka and Sidorak sets, which I think actually works out for this model quite well. Despite it being a combiner model, it actually is one of the best ones. It doesn't have many stability issues and it has some pretty interesting features. That being said, there are a few kind of strange details about it that I do want to point out. Because of the fact it is a combiner model, there are a few things about it like having extra arms near the front of the torso. One of them just ends in a ball joint because they just didn't have any other pieces to stick on it. And the other one is a little bit more realistic. You can kind of use it as a whip or something. And honestly, the way that I usually have this displayed is having the whip arm out as the Rutuka spinner launcher arm. And then just having the other arm being curled up against his chest, much like the official image have it set up because it just looks a lot better that way. Voparak here has a very elongated neck, a very menacing appearance, and this definitely fits in well with the Bionicle aesthetic of all the Titans. In terms of a quick backstory behind this character, he is a Dark Hunter working for the Shadowed One whose sole purpose is to seek out and hunt the Mask of Time. Because of this, Voparak has a very special time energy field. Anyone who lays their hands on his skin will age rapidly thousands of years, which is enough to kill anyone, but in the case of the Shadowed One, was enough to just make him age incredibly rapidly when Makuta Teradax threw the Shadowed One into Voparak in a mad battle for the Mask of Time. So this is Voparak. He is the least expensive out of all of these expensive rare Bionicle sets, but is still one of the rarest ones that you can get. And with that, we can now move on to number 9. And coming in at number 9, we have set number 8927, the Toa Terrain Crawler. And this isn't actually even technically a Bionicle set. I mean, it is a Bionicle set, but it's a Bionicle system set. You see, around 2005 to 2007, LEGO Bionicle was doing well enough that they figured they could launch system-based playsets alongside these standard Bionicle buildable characters. And that's where a set like this Toa Terrain Crawler came to be. It was introduced in August of 2007 and was around for about a year, only being discontinued in July of 2008. Right now it retails for around $167 used and it's a pretty similar price new and sealed. So this one just barely edges out Voprak just by a matter of a couple dollars here and there in terms of price. However, the set did retail for 70 US dollars in 2007, so this one actually is probably just on this list because it already was a pretty large set to begin with. It introduces a large new mold for a super scaled up Faxon, which is the Toa Halimari's mask, which is a really cool piece to get, as well as just being a pretty interesting build overall. I'm very pleased with this build. It's probably one of my favorite and honestly one of the best Bionicle system sets. It did also come with a few opponents that are not shown on this video here, but if you look at the actual screen, you'll notice that it introduced a few recolors, such as a dual molded blended black and white Karapar headpiece mold, which looks 
really good, as well as a white Takadok skull. So this also did reintroduce recolors for the Bionicle Baraki pieces, which are very cool to see. And overall, this was actually one of the few Bionicle system sets that did have a canon storyline significance. In the Bionicle 2007 mini-movie, this was the Toa Terrain Transport that brought the heroes down to the depths of Mari Nui and actually transported them to the final battles of 2007. So not only is this a cool looking model, but it also has a storyline function. And while obviously by today's standards this is definitely not a LEGO set LEGO would ever release today, it has a lot of really fragile pieces to it, there's a lot of just very strange and bizarre design choices, it still is one of the most classic Bionicle system sets, and personally one of my favorites. But with that, we can now move on to number 8. We have another combiner model. This one was from 2003, launched in August of 2003, and only lasted, again, 4-5 to five months, being retired at the end of December. This is set number 10201, Takuta Nuva, which is a combiner model between Makuta Teradax and Taka Nuva. Now this is a pretty interesting case, because the very specific variant of this model that is on this list included a brand new mold for the mask, which is the one that you can see featured on the model here. The value used is around 167 US dollars on Bricklink, and good luck finding this new and sealed. It retailed for $50, and what's really interesting is that this included a movie edition style Crocon, or Mask of Shadows, which, man, doesn't really look anything like it actually looked like in the movie, but was actually a brand new mold with a different type of plastic being used for the Kanohi Crocon. It's a really interesting choice to include a brand new mold in a combiner set like this, which is what makes the set really special, and honestly, the mask alone is probably what you're going to be paying for. That average value used for $167 includes a lot of used listings that simply do not include the mask. If you actually want to buy this set plus the mask, you're probably going to have to pay a lot more, which is why it's ranked higher on the list. In fact, if you go on Bricklink right now, there are only two listings that exist. One for $300 US dollars, and one for $400 US dollars, both of which include the movie edition mask. So honestly, this one probably deserves to be even higher up on the list, but I again am just going off of the 6 months average, which is why it's a little bit lower. But nowadays, the value of this set has really skyrocketed. In terms of the storyline significance, Takuta Nuva was the short-lived fusion between, well, Taka Nuva and Makuta, so it makes sense that this would be a combiner model, which is when Taka Nuva and Teradax fell into the pit of Energized Protodermis to fuse together into this one larger being. It again looks nothing like it actually did in the movie, but I guess that can kind of be excused because the movie was going for something completely different. Essentially, this is very similar to just the standard Teradax build, just with a few extra pieces of Takanuva added on. So really, this just feels like a beefed up Makuta, to be honest. It's not the best build, it's one of the earlier combiner models, which came out at a time when Bionicle was still trying to find its footing where combiner models are concerned, but it is still definitely a very interesting set to have on the list, and it also retailed for 50 US dollars. And next, we can now move on to number 7. So we have set number 8558, Kadok and Gadok, which retailed for $60 in 2002, lasted for quite a long time because it was launched in June of 2002 and was discontinued at the end of 2003, so over a year and six months. Right now, if you want to pick it up, the average value used is around $176. The value new is upwards of $400 US dollars, and that's just on the previous price listings. If you actually want to look at the listings for a complete set used, you're gonna have to be paying somewhere close Closer to 200 to 250 US dollars. So this is again another set that has really skyrocketed in value, despite including two basically of the same build, a red and a blue dinosaur-like build, Kadok and Gadok is a very interesting set for a few major reasons. For one, it is one of the few if not only sets that recolored the Technic pin-to-axle connectors in white for the teeth. These are incredibly rare pieces and will cost you a lot of money just to get on their own from Bricklink, so those are probably some of the reasons why this set is so rare. It also recolored some of the Borok shields in red and blue, which is a very interesting recolor to get, as well as the standard Technic two-length axle in white as well, which is a very rare piece to get, especially for a Technic recolor. This came at a time when LEGO was very, very willy-nilly just kind of recoloring Technic pieces here and there without really paying too much attention to how good of a building experience it would be to have these be recolored, so this definitely is a reason as to why those parts are so rare. 
Now, the sets themselves have a bit of a fun action feature. It's a feature that is somewhat similar to the Muwaka and Kane Ra of 2001, but slightly modified to be a lot more forceful and have a big, strong snapping motion. As you can see right here, the entire gimmick behind these sets was that you could actually use them to battle each other. While it makes no sense in story that they would be fighting each other, the entire gimmick is focused around two kids being able to play with these and try to remove the large technic beam underneath the Kadok and Gadok dinosaur abdomens. Once you remove the beams, the jaw essentially locks, and you cannot actually activate the jaw snapping mechanism, which you can see right here. It's a pretty fun play feature, which to be honest, is not something LEGO would do today, because it actually does damage the gears over time. It actually requires, for the play function to work, the gears to actually strip a little bit, and to skip along the gearing ratio, so it is not the best and most sturdy of builds whatsoever, but it is a very fun function, and one that really works well for its time. If you can see right here, it's just really satisfying to snap the jaws on these creatures, even if you're not trying to hook the jaws around the actual bar at the bottom, which I may add is really difficult to do. It's just a really fun play feature to have, and I honestly miss this era of Bionicle, where they actually were doing more Technic-based builds with fun functions, featuring something completely different compared to standard Technic-style builds. And with that, we can now move on to number 6, which is a very special set. This is 8942 Jetrax T6 Limited Edition. It was launched in August of 2008 and was sold for basically about a year and a half until December of 2009, so quite a long time. But what makes this very, very special is that this is the alternate version of the Jetrax T6. You see on screen right now, here is the original Jetrax in the blue and silver color scheme right here featuring Makuta Antras. However, a completely different version was made. This right here is the yellow limited edition Jetrax, which is made to represent the form of the vehicle during a very short sequence where Antras accidentally crashed it into a light stone and it very briefly glowed yellow. It is such a bizarre and odd choice for a LEGO set being a recolor of another existing set, but because of this exclusivity, the set is incredibly expensive. On Bricklink right now, the 6 month average value used is around 195 US dollars. The storyline significance behind this model is that the Jetrax T6 was one of the leftover vehicles in the Codrex for the Bionicle 2008 storyline, but again, this set is only colored yellow because it briefly hit one of the light stones on its way out. Everything else about the set is identical to the standard retail version, which is not actually quite as rare as this particular model. The rarity of the set is compounded because the particular yellow panel pieces only appeared in one other set, Toa Matanui, which is something that will be appearing later on on this list, which means these particular pieces are basically what makes up most of the value of the set itself. But with that, we can now move on to number 5 on our list, which is going all the way back to one of the original 2001 Bionicle Rahi. This is set number 8539 Manas, the used value is $216 used and the new value is around $400 US dollars, despite the set only retailing for $90 US dollars when it was released in 2001. It was launched August of 2001 and lasted around 10 months and 28 days, going all the way up to the end of June of 2002. Now the concept behind the Manas was much like any of the other Rahi from 2001 in that you could actually use two of basically the identical builds to battle each other. What's very notable about these builds however is that these were the only remote controlled Rahi. As you can see here it came with two different sets of remote controls to be able to actually control the crab like animals. The gimmick behind the set was so that once you hit the mask of your opponent a gear would pop down and essentially make it such that you could not steer or drive the Manas anymore, rendering it immovable which worked to some limited extent. What's very notable about this as well is that it introduced two brand new recolors for Kanohi which remain exclusive to the set to this day. The orange Rurus only appeared in the set as well as the yellow Komaus, which are very exclusive and rare pieces to get on Bricklink, especially because they're great ways to supplement any Kanohi mask collection. Now these essentially are built around a very custom base which also only appeared in this set, both the remote controllers and the remote control receiver base only ever appeared in the Mana set itself, which is very interesting seeing a LEGO set being comprised of a very exclusive piece that only was made for the set itself. But obviously you can see here that driving it around is very fun, the pincers actually move forwards and punch as you rotate and drive the vehicle around, and in universe the story behind the Manas is that they were the guardian animals left to guard Pterodax's Mangaya lair on the island of Matanui, and they also served as Karzani's guard animals on his realm of madness. 
Moving on from that though, we can now take a look at our entry number 4 on this list. This is set number 8996, the Scopio XV1. It retailed for 90 US dollars when it was launched in August of 2009, and it was discontinued around the end of July of 2010, making it last about a year. A used copy of the set right now will set you back around 220 US dollars, while a new copy is upwards of 500 to 600 US dollars, which is an absolutely ridiculous return on investment for a set like this, but definitely makes sense because of the sheer size and scope of this model. 2009 proved to be a return to the more technic style of Lego Bionicle buildings and vehicles, with this set in particular being the largest technic style Bionicle set and one of the largest standard retail Bionicle sets that was ever produced. The set is focused around the Scopio creature or vehicle, it was used both ways in the story as well as its pilot Telurus, one of the last remaining members of the Iron Tribe, after the rest of the tribe was genocided or decimated by the Dreaming Plague. Telurus here features some exclusive parts only in the Scopio set, featuring the brand new Keto Orange or Flame Yellowish Orange Baraki armor piece as well as one of the helmets in the Keto Orange color. Obviously though, the main draw is the Scopio mech itself, which is really cool because in the vehicle form, you can convert it from the large four-legged animal to actually a tank mode. You can see it's a very simple transformation here, the legs just fold inwards, and the treads allow you to roll it along the round, but in general, this is a very interesting model and definitely not something you're used to seeing from a LEGO Technic style build. In universe, this represents a creature that could be found in the sands of Bar Magna, and the vehicle itself was actually modeled after one of the creatures after Tellurus wanted to create a vehicle that could mimic the power and scale of the Scopio creature. Hence, this is the Scopio XV1. It didn't really have a major storyline significance, but it definitely is one of the most formidable and impressive Bionicle sets, and truly the centerpiece of any Bionicle collection. But with that, we can now start to move on to the top 3 rarest standard retail LEGO Bionicle sets ever. And coming in at number 3, we have set number 8940 Karzani. It was launched in August of 2007 and only lasted around 4 months, being discontinued at the end of the year in December of 2007. In the US, this set had an even shorter shelf life. For whatever reason, it was introduced on October 24th of 2007 and was discontinued 1 month and 13 days later, December 7th, 2007. Despite retailing for only 40 US dollars in 2007, if you want to pick up a used copy nowadays, be prepared to shell out around 260 US dollars, and the new copies will cost you upwards of 600 to 700 dollars if you can even find one sealed. So that is how rare this set is, going from 40 dollars sealed to 600 to 700, one of the rarest Bionicle sets, and one that's very notable for being our only in-universe depiction of Karzani, who was a major player in the Bionicle books novels and comics, but really only was seen in this one set in its mutated form. The set also very notably introduced several recolors for very rare Kanohi. Not only did it recolor the Hordika Vakama head in dark green, but it also recolored the Metru version of the Kanohi Ruru in dark blue, where previously it was only available in black for the Toa Metru Wenua set. The set includes Karzani as well as two different Matoran to fight him, Sarda and Idris, as well as kind of a makeshift trap which honestly probably was just there to increase the price. Despite this, again, only being $40, which is pretty nice because you get three figures and a trap. The trap itself is designed to essentially ensnare Karzani, you can see that it wraps completely around the figure itself, but really it's kind of just a throwaway build and the focus is just on Karzani himself. He's not one of the best titans because he has very strange proportions, his waist is about as wide as the tops of his shoulders which makes him feel very rectangular and boxy, but it definitely is something that feels very organic and different from many of the other Bionicle titans. In addition to the Kanohi mask recolors, it also recolors the Karapar chest plate in the dark green and light green or lime blend, as well as the dark green recolor for the Pridak feet actually making up the head of Karzani. So lots of very interesting recolors here. I actually am a big fan of the way the headpiece works and is mounted on the top of the head for the creature here, and I think in general this is one of the most aesthetically unique Bionicle Titans, if not one of the best ones. One of the other reasons this set is so expensive, however, is because of just how prominent this character is in the Bionicle storyline, which again, really focused on this character for most of the novels. The very brief backstory behind Karzani is that he is the ruler of the realm of Karzani, which is named after himself. In the founding days of the Matoran universe, Karzani and his brother Artaka were placed to rule over different quadrants of the Matoran robot. 
Unfortunately, after losing a bout to win the Mask of Creation against his brother Artaka, Karzani was slowly driven insane, and despite his realm being originally intended for Matoran to be sent to be repaired and sent back, Karzani essentially just ended up mutating the Matoran and keeping them as his slaves, if not transforming them into inanimate objects. After Turaga slowly realized around the continent that any Matoran sent to the realm of Karzani never returned, all paths to his land were barred off, only serving to drive Karzani more insane due to the lack of contact with any new life forms. Over the many years, Karzani sat in his realm building his fortress and raising his armies until the 2006 Bionicle storyline caused his paths to cross with the main characters of the 2006 storyline, the Toa and Nika, when they inadvertently ventured into his realm on their way to the island of Voyanui. Karzani continued to be a major antagonist throughout the entire Bionicle storyline from 2006 onwards to 2007, which is the completely mutated form here when he ventured into the waters of the pit. Since then, he remained a fairly major player in the background of the lore until he was eventually killed in Spherus Magna by the great being Velika in disguise near the end of the Bionicle storyline. But that's it for Karzani's backstory and with that we can now move on to number two. And coming in at number two we have our last combiner model on this list. This is set number 10204 Vazon and Cardass. This is a standalone model but also was a combiner model between Vazon and Fenrak, Brutaka and Axon which were the main titans of the 2006 year. It was only sold for two months from October of 2006 up until the end of December of 2006 which is a very very limited release despite retailing for 50 US dollars the value used today is around $286, and it is impossible to buy a new version of the set today. No copy new exists on Bricklink as the time of this recording, so that is just how rare this particular set is. Really, you could just probably purchase the individual sets and put this together, but if you wanted these sets packaged together in the Vazon and Cardas package, that is why this set is so rare. At the time it was released, it was the largest Bionicle set only topped by Scopio, which you could see earlier on this list, and despite coming from multiple different models, the color scheme is actually pretty good. It features a lot of dark blue on the lower limbs, but a mainly dark red and some hints of gold scattered throughout the torso, which you could actually kind of see as bits of the molten lava dripping off of him. The wings are pretty bare bones, but do have a fun feature to unfurl, and of course you can actually mount the Vazon figure on top of him, which is a very fun addition. The quick backstory behind this is that once Vazon encountered the Mask of Life, he was forced to be one of its guardians. The mask originally enlarged a Fenrak spider, making it a large-scaled spider to combat any opponents, but once the spider fell into lava and was seemingly defeated by the Toa Inika, the Mask of Life continued to mutate it into the fearsome Cardass Dragon, which you can see right here. Again, this is a very large and formidable Bionicle build, definitely not one of the more refined combiner models, but still featuring some very unique building techniques, such as the use of the Toa Mata arms as the rib cages here, and a very unique mechanism to actually include friction on the upper legs, which is actually not something that you can see on any other Bionicle set. But with that, we can now move on to the number one rarest Bionicle set out of every single retail release set. This is set number 8998. Toa Matanui, retailing for $50, it was launched in August of 2009 and discontinued at the end of the year in December of 2009. Despite retailing for 50 US dollars, if you want to pick up a used version of the set today, be prepared to fork over over 400 US dollars for the set used. If you want a new copy of the set, it'll probably set you back closer to upwards of 1,500 US dollars, and for a set that originally retailed for $50, this is a pretty insane price. This set is incredibly rare mostly because it is the only set that you can actually find the Pearl Gold Kanohi Ignika Mask Mold. This is a very prominent mask mold for Bionicle, it is probably one of the most important masks throughout the entire Bionicle run, and of course the most prominent form was in the Pearl Gold color. If you want to purchase the mask by itself without the figure, it is already worth 150 to 300 US dollars on Bricklink, with only four listings at the time of this recording. So you can see really the main value behind the set is just in the mask itself. 
When the set was first released, it also was not one of the more popular Bionicle sets, especially because a lot of people, myself included, felt like the color scheme was particularly jumbled with the set, and it honestly was not one of the best titans in the way it was built. It tries to factor in the standard yellow LEGO color, as well as pearl gold, plus the keto orange or flame yellowish orange color, and also tries to throw in black and silver, and all in all, for a standard retail set that was not a combiner model, it is frankly a pretty jumbled color scheme. That being said, it is one of the more refined titans that they ever put out for Bionicle, which makes sense because it was the last one, featuring a very unique mechanism for articulating the pistons in the legs. You can actually see each of the four pistons on the hip twist and turn as you move the legs themselves, which is a really cool function that definitely adds a lot of friction, as well as dual ball joints on the knees, which really add a lot of stability to this model. This was also the only set featuring Mata Nui that did actually come with his sword element, which was featured in the Bionicle Legend Legend Reborn movie, but unfortunately the standard canister set for Mata Nui never actually featured this sword. For a titan size set featuring arguably the most important character in Bionicle lore, there is a reason why this is the rarest Bionicle set. And honestly, his backstory needs no introduction, but just in case you aren't familiar, I'm going to give the very brief rundown. Mata Nui was the name of the AI consciousness created to govern the Great Spirit Robot. Eventually, after being overthrown by Makuta Teradax, the consciousness was transferred into the Kanohi Ignika, which crash-landed on the sands of Bara Magda and formed a body for itself. Technically, this model is not even canon in the Bionicle story, because Mata Nui never actually made a Titan version of himself. The only canon version of Mata Nui's body is the one that you can see in the standard retail canister sets. This Titan version was honestly just something special the designers made to give a bit more importance to the Mata Nui figure. And as such, in the storyline, he never actually grew to the size, which is pretty funny given that the rarest Bionicle set is actually something that never appeared in the actual Bionicle storyline. But with that, we have finally summed up all 10 of the rarest LEGO Bionicle sets. Alright, and with that, we have summed up our video taking a look at the top 10 most expensive and rarest LEGO Bionicle sets. Let me know down in the comments below, do you own any of these? Did any of these surprise you? And if so, are there any that you actually want to get yourselves? Thank you all so much for tuning in to this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thanks, and bye-bye for now.